box end pointer notation. Computer scientists spend a lot of time drawing boxes and arrows. And we're going to add some more of those to our environment diagrams in order to represent the built-in sequence types in Python. So let's look at another example. I told you that you can create a tuple like that. Well, it turns out you can put tuples in your tuples if you want. So if I want to put together a pair of pairs, I can say one and two is in there and three and four is also in there. And what is this pair of pairs? Well, that's exactly what I typed in. And what is the element at index one of the pair of pairs? It's actually three, four. So what's the point? Well, it turns out that we can put tuples in our tuples because we can put any value we want, any object as an element of a tuple. So I'll just get that code going again. So a pair is one, two, and the pairs, let's say are one, two, followed by three, four. If I visualize the execution of this, I see that pair is bound to a box with two sections, one for each element, and then inside the box, you see the value that's contained there. Now, if that value is itself a sequence, we write that elsewhere in the diagram. So pairs is a tuple with two elements. The first element, now highlighted in red, is a tuple that contains one and two. And the second element contains three and four. So we had created two different tuples, one here and one there. This one had two tuples within it, and so we ended up with four tuples. What else can we do? Well, if I have these pairs, let's say, I can also assign each of those pairs to a different name. Uh, how about A and B equals pairs. Using multiple assignment, I bind the element at index 0 to A and the element at index 1 to B. So as I step through this, the first line creates exactly the same structure that we saw before. The second line binds the name A and B to those two tuples that already exist. So A is bound to 1, 2, and B is bound to the tuple containing 3 and 4. So here are two different environment diagrams for two different examples. Notice that every time I include a tuple literal, I create a new tuple, and the way we draw it has the indices there, and it has the values at those indices. Now what we just witnessed is called the closure property of data types. What is that? Well, if there's a method for combining data values, which satisfies the closure property, it means that the result of combination can itself be combined using the same method. So I combined two numbers to create a tuple, and then I created combined two tuples to create another tuple. Closure is the key to power in any means of combination because it permits us to create hierarchical structures. Hierarchical structures are made up of parts, which themselves can have parts. And those can have parts, and those can have parts, and those can have parts, and so on. So tuples can contain tuples as elements. Therefore, they satisfy the closure property of data types.